Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Logan, the drunken metalhead who muses, and tonight we're musing about St. Patrick's Day and really all things uh, Ireland, metal, and beer. I've picked out an underrated uh, Irish metal album that I want to highlight, and of course I've got a tasty beer over here to enjoy while doing it. So put on your green, crack open a pint, and let's go. So when picking the uh, band from Ireland that I wanted to talk about, I couldn't go with the uh, the low-hanging fruit of Finn Lizzy or uh, Primordial. I wanted to dive a little bit deeper and kind of highlight a band that just does not get its you know does not get talked about as much currently. I mean they've been defunct for actually a, a decade now. Their last album came out in 2013. I am uh, talking about Altar of Plagues, and we're going to be diving into this album right here, Mammal. So first, the brass tacks. Uh, in the background, we're listening to a weird, weird fucking album that kind of, well, it, it pairs well with the band and the album we'll be talking about, but then at the same time, alphabetically on my shelf, it was right behind the band Altar of Plagues. And this is, of course, uh, Aluk Totolo? I think that's how you say it. Shit if I know. This is their de debut album from 2007 called Dissension. Now, I would describe these guys as abrasive black metal mixed with kraut rock i mean that's honestly that's how they describe themselves i don't know enough about kraut rock to really comment too much but it's it's definitely weird dissonant and uh kind of mesmerizing so it's gonna be our background music for the night as far as beers go though it's not from ireland you know, the only one I could find <laughs> around here that directly was, of course, is a Guinness. And I'm going to be a little more exciting than just picking a fucking Guinness to pair. Uh, this one is from a local uh, Charlotte brewery called Devil's Logic. There we go. We got the devil right there. And it's a dry Irish stout um, called the Cliffs of Moher. <laughs> I think I said that right. So these are actual... Uh, Cliffs in Ireland, I believe, on the northwest northwest portion of the island. So, cheers! It's supposed to be a nice, like, clean stout. It's only uh, four point six percent alcohol, which is for a stout pretty good. And really, that's all I need right now. You know, you got to pace yourself on St. Patrick's Day, after all. Wow! Look at that. Got it in my green Mother Earth goblet. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's just so so smooth. Kind of very light too, and there's a hint of coffee bitterness. But at the same time, it finishes fairly dry. So, cheers to Devil's Logic and. Cheers to a nice dark beer. So yeah, this beer right here pairs well with this album. It's uh, it's dark, bitter, tastes like a cold, dry desert. It quenches you without you feeling quenched. Just like this. So as I said, besides their you know Irish lineage, if you will. A reason why I wanted to talk about Altar of Plagues is just because I'm, I'm worried they're at risk of being left behind in like the metal sphere, you know, especially when you're thinking about um, the current scene of post shoegaze, black metal, whatever you want to call that shit, you know, but I, I, I don't think they're going to continue to... 
be name drop with like the the bands that are currently out making this style of music and I think in the rear view there's a chance that they might be forgotten about and if I if I can have anything to say about it I uh, they won't be so um, I picked I picked this album right here uh, 2011's Mammal because this was kind of my first exposure and still my favorite in their in their catalog I think a lot of people when thinking about this band and will think about their final album 2013's um, Teeth and Glory and will most likely gloss over this album as well which I think is a shame because this fucking thing is great and deserves a review. Altar of Plagues have also been going for longer than some of the current bands that are still making a name for themselves in this scene. I mean, this is uh, one of their earlier EPs, simply called Soul, that came out in 2008, but they were releasing stuff as far back as 2006. So I think they were kind of one of the forefathers for just adding more atmosphere like post rock post metal atmospherics into their sound which let's dive into their sound real quick before we dive into the actual uh mammal album so it definitely swells with a lot of post metal intensity but while at the same time focusing on like very caustic and eerie soundscapes, you know? So it's not like a bright, shiny album. It almost has like a DSBM level of dirginess to it at points. There's also a certain focus on repetition and, you know, creating the feeling of ritual over this album, too. In fact, on, uh, I believe, let me check, track number three, which is When the Sun Drowns in the Ocean, there are female vocals that are performed in Gaelic, and it's a act known as keening. I'll have to look up a definition. But they definitely try to create a dark, ritualistic journey with this album that really kind of straddles the line between post-metal, atmospheric black metal, and even a little bit of like hardcore punk. There's definitely some raw, unbridled energy on here that crops up from time to time. Alright, diving into the tracks. So, Mammal consists of four sizable slices of this dirgy post-black sound that comes up to about 51 minutes total. So it's it's not a short album, but at the same time it doesn't overstay its welcome. So it's got that going for it. Um, the opening song really hits the high watermark. Uh, Nep it's called Neptune is Dead. And it's kind of like the magnum opus from them overall. Like from everything I've heard that they've done. Um, it's about 18 minutes in length, and though it's really drawn out, you know, because of the song length, every single section of it seems very purposeful, and it builds in a very driving kind of manner. So, that 18 minutes goes by extremely quick. Um, there's a lot of post-rock dynamics, almost... <laughs> in dare I say a pretty kind of way, this is probably the prettiest this album sounds. Um, it just absolutely explodes at the eight minute mark with probably the best section of the album with this just driving guitar melody which just is spine chilling and epic at the same time. It really just soars over the music and just brings the song to its climactic second half if you will which really dives a little bit deeper into the uh, slower, more post-metal kind of sound. I, I hear Isis a couple different times on this album, and the end of Neptune is Dead is one of them. Um, the second song 
feather and bone really keeps up the momentum well and this is owed largely to the drums so the drummer on here is known as johnny king uh we'll talk about him a little in a little bit um but he really is the highlight for some of these tracks uh feather and bone especially it's uh driving double bass and powerful uh snare work that propels feather and bone forward also um when the melodies do come in they serve to expand the atmosphere in a fairly unsettling spine chilling way like to bring up uh, Sunbather again, it sounds like a more bastardized version of Sunbather, where everything sounds like shimmery and glossy. Everything here sounds dirty and like just ooh, makes makes you feel like slightly uncomfortable, though intrigued at the same time. Um, really. Uh, the post-rock elements widen the landscape of this song a lot and it closes in an eerie fashion with almost clean singing vocals and another section that comes off like Isis. Very uh, slow and melodically driven. Track three, when the sun drowns in the ocean, kind of be called the throwaway track of the album. It's more of like an instrumental interlude. I mean, it does do a marvelous job of holding tension, but then at the same time it's about seven minutes long and it kind of loses the momentum of the first two tracks by the time you get to the end. Though that is also where you get like the Gaelic um, chanting is in this song, which for the concept of the overall album and the ritualistic feeling of it, it could be important. So maybe that's me nitpicking. Um, when we get to the final song, which is uh, all life converges at some to, to some center. I mean, this shit's like kind of opens up in a beautiful, like more ambient fashion, but then it becomes jagged and really the most hardcore sounding of the bunch. I mean, the production here is very stripped down and raw, and the vocals especially sound like hardcore shouts. Um, but when it gets massive. Man, it gets massive, and those post-metal kind of guitars take center stage, you know? So overall, the, the tracks on the album really do a great job of um, feeling a little, like, jilted and jagged at times, but then they also all build together to kind of create a cohesive climax, you know, to the individual songs. And there's definitely a certain, like, depressive motif that kind of rides through the whole album and definitely one of, like, death and decay. As far as, like, the overall flow of the album, it's definitely front-loaded. I mean, Neptune is Dead is such a great song and just really uh, overshadows the rest of the album, you know? And then the fact that the second best song on the album, Feather and Bone, is right after it just continues to make it feel front-loaded. Um, still, because there are only four tracks on that album, um, and that even the closing song, a good song overall, and it ratchets up the intensity of it, it makes this 50 minute long album go rel relatively quickly and relatively smoothly, especially if you're buying into like the dark uh, atmosphere that abounds this release. Um, this is definitely not an album to neglect if you're looking for a dark and atmospheric trip into what post-black metal kind of could have been and was, you know, back before a, a certain album kind of blew the scene wide open. Um, this is one that I, I revisit often enough, and it will probably continue to be, if not for Neptune is Dead, alone. I can't recommend that track enough. So overall, I give this an 8.4 out of 10 on Drunken Metalhead Reviews. So one last parting question for this uh, St. Patrick's Day review. Um, what, what will be the uh, 
the final outcome for this band and this album right here, Mammal. Will Altar of Plagues, you know, end up being more revered for what they did for the sound in later years, or will they end up being less and less talked about? I I could see either way. I think whatever the band wants will kind of play into that, you know? Um, I know they're not against reforming, potentially. They So they initially broke up in 2013, but then got back together for um, a round of shows in 2015 across Europe. So I think if they did something like that again, it could, it could have an impact. Um, I also think that the legacy that some, or one guy in particular from this album right here, uh, Johnny King, who was the drummer, and I, I thought one of the highlights of this album for sure was the drumming, has gone on to be in many, many different projects. Uh, the chief one, for me at least, is he's currently in Conan, and uh, was on their last two albums, this one included. But he's also a part of uh, another more doom, more traditional doom band, uh, Dread Sovereign, and also this band called Malthusian, which are like a black and death metal band. They just did a killer split with, um, oh, Suffering Hour. So, I think no matter how you cut it though, they really help to bridge the gap between like post-metal and post-rock and like the more early 2000s atmospheric black metal like Wolves in the Throne Room, you know? And I would say that they, you know, help make way for bands like Death Heaven, uh, Bosti, uh, Naj, Ghost Bath, and Sanhet, for sure. Like, I, I would definitely give these guys some credit for that. And I hope, I hope they get, uh, the respect that they deserve. Anyway, cheers guys. Thanks for watching. Drink good beer. Listen to good metal.